So I've got 5 p.m. So I think we'll get started. Um, if you want to, you can pull up our, our slides here. It'll be at the bottom of the uh, slides too. Um, I'm Jason, and this is my colleague Brett, and we're going to talk about sunsetting. So why sunset? Um, sunsetting simply a means to an end, not the goal itself. So we want to start with talking about what we're really trying to achieve uh, through sunsetting. Um, in our experience and talking from others, we found that there's a particular set of challenges that libraries are dealing with uh, that sunsetting can help with. Um, and we'll focus on just a couple challenges here. Um, academic libraries and our universities are changing quickly. Um, libraries need to change quickly too. And there's lots of hurdles to making the kinds of transformative changes we need. Um, one of the big challenges with the changes happening now is that we don't always know exactly what changes need to be made. And when you're in that type of situation, uh, one of the worst compounding variables is being too busy. Uh, we're all already busy at the same time that we're being asked to do more and different. People need time to discover what the future library uh, could look like. But our people are already busy, and that's often at the heart of an inability uh, to change fast enough. And I only know two solutions for being too busy. You either hire more people or you do less. Um, if you know of others, please let me know, and we'll have discussion period at the end so you can <laughs> fill me in on other solutions for busy. Um, this is a talk about doing less. Uh, lots of ways to do less. Uh, you can work smarter, gain efficiencies, apply automation. Uh, you can say no. Uh, you can be more selective uh, what you take on. Um, uh, lots of different ways to do less. Uh, but what less looks like to us is staff having slack time. Uh, slack time is needed for innovation. Uh, we need at least some people to have some proportion of available, unscheduled, unmanaged time. Uh, busyness fills up time and excludes opportunity time. Um, this is a quote from Tom DeMarco's Slack. Uh, what I call bankruptcy of inventiveness is often the result of a failure to set aside the resources necessary to let invention happen. The principal resource needed for invention is Slack. When companies can't invent, it's usually because their people are too busy. Busyness and effectiveness aren't the same thing. So to restate, the core problem is that just as we're trying to make changes, we and our colleagues are too busy. And we need to create space for new work in order to make the innovative changes we need to in strategic directions. Um, so we've come to thinking about sunsetting uh, through thinking about how to do less in order to increase the amount of slack time we have uh, to create new services. And uh, one of the advantages over other approaches is that we found that sunsetting has the advantage of maximizing uh, the amount of recovered time. So uh, before I get into some specifics, I want to say a few words about our background and the perspective we're coming uh, with uh, to this work. Uh, we both work in the Digital Library Initiatives Department at NCSU Libraries. Um, this is one of the library's IT departments. Uh, we're a department responsible for creating novel services and applications uh, using a variety of technologies. Um, our department has had its fair share of successes and as a result we've begun to encounter the limits of what we can sustain. So many of our solutions to creating space are focused on technical projects and products, um, but we believe that these approaches are broadly applicable. Okay, now we've talked some about why you may want to sunset a service. Let's get more into the nuts and bolts. Um, we don't want to have like continual open questions about the future of a service. Um, that can really take a toll on staff. So we like to save ourselves by setting trigger points for when we might consider a new direction. And while only some of these might end in a sunsetting, um, there are useful moments to pause and consider that as an option. Um, a lot of our work on sunsetting developed when one of our library and, uh, developers left. Uh, we had to take this large portfolio of successful products covering a wide variety of types of projects and technologies and distribute them across the department. It really hit home how we needed to take these kinds of events much more seriously if we were going to keep moving forward um, and have the time to do that. And we want to have the opportunity to address uh, some of these questions before someone leaves. So we've begun to identify some other trigger points. Um, we know that a staff change, including an arrival, 
uh, is one trigger point for considering changes, including sunsetting. Uh, you'll need to pick your own uh, trigger points, but here are some suggestions for trigger points from the kinds of technology work that we do. Um, if you have to touch or change a large code base in a significant way, then consider options like sunsetting. Is it worth it to put in the work needed to keep the project working? Um, there's a lot more to say about the importance of maintenance and the need to better valorize this necessary work, but in the life cycle of technology projects, maintenance often exposes a, a particular organizational challenge that we've seen. Um, the true cost of maintenance is often hidden, and why is that? Uh, we think in part, at least, it's because technology projects start with an even distribution of effort uh, amongst various stakeholders and technical staff. But once a product is in maintenance mode, it can sometimes lead to an uneven uh, distribution of effort. There's a long tail to these sorts of maintenance costs. Um, even if the percent of time devoted to each product might be low over time, uh, each still takes up some headspace and can lead to more anxiety and contest context switching costs. Um, another trigger point can be changing skills. We found that um, over time we've made better choices on maintainable software stacks, um, improved some of our development practices. Um, over time we've consolidated more around certain technologies that are meant to get the job done. And this has meant that we're no longer developing and updating skills in some technologies that we used to know. Um, and for a department of our size, maintaining depth and redundancy of technology skills ac across the department is, is a real challenge. Um, we'll also see that skills in the market change. For instance, uh, maybe you are a PHP shop and you're finding that you're hiring uh, more Python developers. Um, consider sunsetting when you're not actively cultivating the skills needed to continue to maintain a service. Um, and since the time you've developed an application, um, have commercial options become available or matured? At that point, there's often no longer a compelling reason to maintain a bespoke application. You might need to live with something less bespoke, um, but it can be really worth it for the amount of saved time that you can recover. Um, so there's lots of reasons why organizational change might trigger sunsetting. Uh, one's when you see the strategic direction and goals of your university changing. You get this explicit statement of a pending change. Uh, if you want to realign quickly, consider what needs to be deprioritized and potentially sunset. Okay, so you've hit a trigger point that sets things in motion, but that doesn't really determine the value of something. And I can't answer for you what you'll find to be valuable, so you, you'll need to evaluate um, impact by your own metrics. Um, we do have one suggestion, though, on uh, where you could start. One way that, can be, that we've found that can be effective uh, for determining value is asking the question, what if we sunset this? Uh, starting the conversation there really presses every product and service to argue its value anew uh, within the current context. Even if it was once successful, uh, is it still? Again, this is a reason to, to stick to your trigger points. You don't want to fatigue folks by continually calling uh, everything into question. Oh, excuse me. So you've made the decision to sunset. How do you proceed? Well, sunsetting work is first and foremost a project, and the first thing you'll need is a team. But this team can be different from the original team who created the project being sunset. We found that starting a sunsetting project often immediately frees up some time for the highest performers on our teams who are carrying the bulk of the maintenance burden. Making sunsetting a project also privileges this work and helps give credit to folks who make this kind of work happen. <coughs> the second thing you will need is a communication plan. Our background is in technical products and projects, but we found that what needs the most lead time in sunsetting projects is the development of the communication plan. Part of this is internal communication for the affected teams, departments, or the library as a whole. The projects that get sunset are often someone's baby, and they reflect significant achievements in people's careers. It can be difficult to let go of things that have been part of someone's professional identity, and sensitivity to that is important for internal communication plans. The other part of communication is addressing the challenges around external audiences, users, faculty, campus partners, etc. These may all be impacted by sunsetting in some way. 
What options exist for data export or migration to other services? And what services do you provide for them moving forward? Part of this work should be the exploration of alternative options, if any, for a user to have their remaining needs met. So I'm going to discuss some of the paths we've taken to help create more space for new work and share examples of projects we've been able to sunset at NCSU libraries. However, as Jason said, it's important to note that this is where the values of your own organization come into play, and different approaches and strategies might be needed in your own context. I'll also share alternative approaches that are on the sunsetting spectrum. We've tried to focus on sunsetting as the default choice when evaluating mature projects, but there are other near decommissionings that you can also consider if you can't get the traction for sunsetting outright. Sunsetting has the advantage of maximizing recovered time over the other approaches. And that's the primary goal of this work, to greatly increase the, excuse me, greatly decrease the amount of effort being put into mature projects in order to create opportunities for new work. So don't laugh, we maintained a wiki called Wolf Wikis uh, for way too long, we're the NC State Wolf Pack, that's where that comes from. This is obviously a mature area with commercial options available, but people were still using this particular implementation. In order to sunset the service, we developed a communication plan for users and provided options for how they could export and use their data. We learned that it often takes some research to learn who your current users actually are. And this took quite some time to sunset, especially due to the large amount of communication with faculty. Before you communicate with your users, you'll need to develop some migration options. We don't want to just abandon our users outright. How do we still direct our users to services that will meet their needs? We ended up not needing these for wolf wikis, but they were a good safety net to have available. You may be noticing a theme in the naming strategy. Uh, another service we recently sunset is Wolfwalk, a photographic guide to the history of North Carolina State University optimized for mobile devices. This was NCSU Library's first iOS app and a test bed for GIS and mobile technologies. We lost our in-house expertise in iOS development, so we made the decision to sunset the project. And this is an example of how a staff departure and skills changes can be a trigger point for sunsetting. Another example, GroupFinder, was an application for helping students meet up in groups at the library. Turns out, students now use social media or SMS to coordinate use of spaces. This thing called Twitter. Um, this is an example of how the commercial trigger point, in this case text messaging, can provide a viable alternative and allow for sunsetting of a service. GroupFinder came out before text messaging was such, such a thing, so changing environment. Another important note to consider is that sunsetting has nothing to do with the quality of work that was done. Uh, for example, Lentil was a su su successful project that played a big role in the early publicity for the James B. Hunt Jr. Library. It jump-started part of our social media archiving program and also provided a test bed for some large-scale displays in Hunt. Sometimes, however, sunsetting is out of your control. Due to recent changes in the Instagram API, thank you Facebook, we are in the process of developing a sunsetting plan. In many ways, Instagram has made the decision about whether this project lives on or not. So beyond sunsetting, uh, another general approach you can take are migrations. And migrations can be a way for projects to live on but in different forms, especially ones that take less effort to maintain. Some migration paths can be used to breathe a sustaining breath into old projects and some can be used to demonstrate that a project really is ready to be sunset. We won't cover the whole spectrum of alternatives, but here are some ways you can reduce the load of services, even if you rule out outright sunsetting. Building on some of our development practices, we've experimented using vagrant development environments as a migration target. These are isolated, disposable environments that can emulate a web server in every detail that are run on a local machine. Enter collections views. Uh, the aim of collection views was to use data to help us understand how our collection expenditures relate to different departments at NC State. The service was no longer heavily used, but still has potential future value. Thanks to the depth of expertise held by the stakeholders, a virtual environment was a viable way to both remove the service from production, but to sustain it in a way that we could re resurrect it if we needed to. Static sites are another migration path and are one way to keep an application alive with lower effort and higher sustainability. Oftentimes, by the time a project reaches maturity, we have a much better understanding of what features or capabilities are most important. We can take just the most useful, important parts of an application to allow it to live on. 
This isn't a sun setting, strictly speaking, but it's also maybe a point that you don't get to without raising the question of sun setting. It's also worth noting that a static site migration can be completed by someone other than the original developer, say a student. Uh, one static site migration we've done is red, white, and black, which highlights African American history at NC State in combination with an annual tour led by NC State faculty. This is obviously important historical content, but since it doesn't change much over time, it was a good candidate for a static site migration. It also demonstrated how static sites can preserve core features of original services. Static sites don't necessarily mean a loss of functionality. For example, search is now possible client-side using JavaScript. We can also use some of our existing infrastructure to smooth the path to sunsetting, such as using web archiving to create a snapshot of a site. We did just this with the Learning Space Toolkit, a grant project deliverable that we migrated using web archiving tools. It was really great to see Dr. Joan Lippincott reference this project during her talk this morning, and hopefully this shows how the web archiving static site approach can extend the useful life of a project while also bringing closure to a major grant deliverable. Those are just a few of many recent examples of sunsetting work we've done at NCSU. In addition to team formation and communication planning, each of these approaches have some common actions that should be taken to ensure the success of sunsetting work. First, we need some ways to capture the history and success of projects so that people can continue to be recognized for the great work that they've done. We also need to preserve what we've learned from a project for our internal needs. One way we do this is through project pages that capture who worked on the projects, describe some of what the project was about, and share some of what we think the major impacts were. And it also serves as a way for external folks to get a historical view of our projects. We also need a way to capture the parts of the project that are essential for the organization, the internal part of the work. This might be documentation about code repositories, database backups, or project documents. Finally, perhaps the biggest lesson we've learned as a result of our recent experience as sunsetting projects is the importance of considering eventual exit paths from new projects during their conception rather than deferring these considerations to a time after a project is mature and has become maybe burdensome in some way. OK, so um, I'm going to talk some about how we do portfolio management and how that fits in. Uh, we start portfolio management with the individual staff person. We occasionally ask staff to update their portfolio of current work. Um, this is a much lighter weight process than something like an annual report. Um, the audience is just managers in the department. It isn't seen any further. You can ask Jill, have you seen any of these? No? OK. Uh, and um, it's not a tool that we use in evaluations. We keep it brief. Um, it's just a snapshot in time. Um, and we largely create and manage portfolios to identify uh, trigger points and evaluate the amount of slack time that staff have. OK, so what do you include in an individual's portfolio? Uh, we start with the products and services the person works on, of course. Uh, we want to gauge the current level of effort involved in their major work. Uh, we list projects, initiatives, experiments, um, so that we can identify places where we can fail fast, what we effectively can sunset early. Um, sometimes we'll see an opportunity. We want to take advantage of it. Um, and these are often places where there can be some give in schedules and all. Um, we list committee assignments. Uh, sometimes one person can keep getting tapped for committee work. Uh, reviewing and requesting changes to membership uh, can recover some slack time for staff. And of course, you know, committees can also be sunset if they're no longer useful. Um, and we include service in really anything that's going to take a significant amount of time. Um, for every product, project, committee, et cetera, uh, we note the current status. Is the work still active? or in some kind of maintenance mode. Uh, we also ask staff for a recommendation for how to proceed. Uh, what do they consider to be the current value of the work in their portfolio? Um, it's really important to get the perspective of those who are closest to the work. Um, as managers, uh, we're encouraging um, folks having a job complex that includes variety. Uh, we like to create a portfolio with a good mix of projects and products at different stages of development. Um, then we can also balance portfolios across the department. This can help even out, say, responsibility for maintenance versus pursuing new ideas. 
uh, we can recognize if a trigger point has been hit. Um, and in some cases, we can find products uh, that can be sunset. And we think that this approach to portfolio management can also um, hopefully feed up into higher level strategic planning as well, um, the portfolio for the library. Okay, so to sum up, we want to be an innovative department and in library where people have the space to do the new things that need done. Um, sunsetting is a way to maximize the amount of slack time recovered to allow us to better inno innovate. And active portfolio management has helped us identify where we might be able to clear space for new work. Um, and if you'd like to read more about sunsetting, uh, we've begun writing up a short booklet. Um, it's a work in progress, uh, but you can already find some extras there that we couldn't include in the presentation today, like uh, why we choose the term sunsetting over other terms that we could have used. And uh, we'll be including more potential trigger points there, um, examples and the like. And we'll, we're also looking at uh, writing up uh, more in depth some of the case studies of successful and unsuccessful sun settings. Um, so we'd be interested in talking with you more. Um, and finally, you can also find a link there of another uh, slide deck that we did that has a Halloween theme to it, if that's your, <laughs> if that's your thing. Um, questions? Uh